The chase is on. It looks like they actually are trying to evade us. To catch a potential killer. I know for a fact that she's the one that done it. It's a high-speed murder mystery, and at the end of this road... Murder is one thing, but when you cut somebody up into pieces, you got to be an animal. Everybody knows who did it. It's two days after Christmas, and holiday tourists pack the coastal city of St. Pete, Florida. A group of Canadian visitors take a sunrise stroll at the water's edge, and that's when they spot something in the pre-dawn light. There's a leg washed up on, on one of the inlets in, in St. Pete. A month earlier and 25 miles inland, 38-year-old massage school student Kelly Moriarty is wrapping up her classes. She made the honor roll. She was excellent, and she really was looking forward to the new career. And now Kelly can't wait for the holiday break, and her big family is excited to see her. She was the youngest of four. Uh, she grew up with three older brothers. Just uh, fun, outgoing, always trying to tag along with her older brothers wherever we went. She had a great laugh. Uh, she, she was always happy. Kelly usually celebrates the holidays at her brother Brendan's home. Kelly would come over every holiday um, at Thanksgiving and Christmas. But this year, Kelly is making her own plans. She had phoned my mother and let my mother know that she would be spending Thanksgiving at Pat's home. Pat, as in her partner, 61-year-old Pat Carter. Kelly and Pat have allegedly been dating for two years. They met after Pat's husband, Ed, a former Hillsborough County Sheriff's deputy, passed away. The relationship came as a surprise to Pat's family, but they seemed supportive. She says, Charlie, I ain't never been so happy in my life. I think that I was gay all my life. The best we could tell, it, it was a very good relationship. They enjoyed each other's company and got along very, very well. So well that they planned to spend the holidays together for the first time. Then Thanksgiving comes and goes, and Kelly's mom checks in with her only daughter. I waited until after Thanksgiving and called her uh, to see how it was. And she said it was fun. And I said, who cooked? And, you know, the normal conversation. Uh, Pat cooked, and who was there? Family. She never told me anything more than she had to when it came to Pat. I don't know why. This is the last time Kelly's family speaks to her. Uh, Kelly and Pat were actually going to spend Christmas at Kelly's apartment. Uh, my mother made uh, a couple attempts to communicate with Kelly, left messages on her machine, <clears throat> all of which were unresponded to. Was it unusual for Kelly not to reach out to you? I mean, how often did you guys speak? A lot. Uh, she would usually call me. Now Christmas is over and still no word from Kelly. Then I knew that uh, something bad had happened. Desperate for answers, Kelly's parents try to reach out to her partner, Pat. There's just one problem. I didn't know anything about Pat. I didn't know, even know her last name. At this point, the only way Kelly's parents can get a hold of their daughter is by her cell phone. Now late January, things go from bad to worse when a voice answers Kelly's phone. It's automated. They said her phone has been disconnected. I almost had a panic attack. So I called Brendan right away. Unfortunately, she's not the only frantic phone call to Brendan. Kelly's apartment manager calls and informs Brendan that his sister is over three weeks late on her January rent. Yes, January. Kelly's family hasn't heard from her since Thanksgiving. That was two months ago. Brendan calls the police. But I thought that something was wrong. He had advised me to come down and fill out a missing person's report with the detectives at the Bradenton Police Department. Then, with a police escort in tow, Brendan enters his sister's apartment. Something was wrong. Once inside... It was very, very clear that nothing had been touched in some time. Um, Christmas tree was up. There were presents under the tree. Were you alarmed? Absolutely. Uh, hadn't heard from my sister since before Thanksgiving, and we get to her apartment after Christmas. Christmas presents are unopened. Uh, mails stacked up. Absolutely, I was alarmed. The apartment is frozen in time. Inside Kelly's home, it's Christmas. But outside, it's well into the new year. 
The very next day, detectives from Bradenton PD locate Pat Carter's home address in Plant City. And when they knock on the door, to their shock and surprise, someone answers. Pat's a daughter. That's the first we heard of her daughter, Stacy Morrell. And they said she was very polite and said she didn't know where they were. She told the police that they went on a trip and would definitely be back. Stacy, her husband Anthony, and their daughter have been temporarily living at her mother's house since losing their home to foreclosure. And when police asked Pat's daughter when she last saw her mother, uh, between the times of 10 p.m. and midnight of December 16th. Yeah, that's a long stretch. Correct. Um, you're looking at uh, approximately six weeks, uh, six to seven weeks after they went missing from the time that Kelly Moriarty was first reported as missing to Bradenton PD. And according to Stacy, on the night the couple left, she said they were fighting all night. In fact, as court records would soon reveal, behind closed doors, Pat and Kelly may have been anything but a happy couple. Coming up, where are Kelly and Pat? And a shocking discovery on the beach, a leg. Whose is it? She indicated to the police Kelly had killed Pat. <laughs> 